Hi, my name is Mark Lajeunesse. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to try to answer this question as quickly as I can today. What makes meta-analysis special? And I think the quickest way for me to make a case for why it's a special way to um, reach a consensus across published research is by highlighting three things that we do in meta-analysis that kind of sets it apart in terms of modeling variability across studies. So let's jump into a Monte Carlo simulation here just to help you visualize variability that occurs across studies. What you're seeing raining down here are um, effect sizes. There are uh, ways in which we, you could quantify the outcome of a study. Here, these are hedges D um, effect sizes, basically a variation on a t-test. And uh, what you're seeing is the effects of sampling error on study outcomes. And so all these study outcomes are derived from the same experiment where there's a control and treatment group and you're contrasting the two to see if the treatment is effective. Um, but what they differ is their sample size, how much information they measured to perform the test in the first place. And when a study is classified as significant with a t-test, it gets coded in blue. It could also get coded in red if uh, the t-test indicated it was a significant uh, negative outcome. Uh, but most effect sizes here in this case are coded as uh, null outcomes. I, you know, forgive me if I'm describing a t-test as a classifier here. Uh, and the reason maybe I'm using this jargon to uh, describe what we're doing is because a, an old way to synthesize studies was to do a vote count procedure. And basically what you're doing is you classify each study based on whether they were significant or not. That's what the t-test is doing, is a classifier of whether or not a study is significant or not. And the meta-analyst does not care about any of that stuff. We don't care whether or not your study is significant or not. What we're interested in is bringing it to the bedrock. As close as possible, you want a numerical value of the magnitude and direction of the study outcome. We don't want to ask the question, did the treatment differ from the control? We want to know how much did the treatment differ from the control. And when you treat study outcomes like this rather than a categorical group, rather than a, uh, a class of significant and not significant, you expose all that variability. And uh, really that's the fun stuff in terms of meta-analysis and research synthesis because with that variability we can model and improve inferences at the syn synthesis level. And so just again to reiterate, the first thing that what we do in meta-analysis um, that makes it special is that we don't quantify studies using significance of each study. We quantify studies using effect sizes. And again, the benefit of that is, is the effect sizes expose the variability across studies. Now the second thing that the meta-analyst meta does is we don't treat all those studies equally. We know sampling error is important, right? You're seeing right here sampling error in action. Large amount of variability in study outcomes. Um, let's model that. Let's include that in our analysis. That's what this little plot here shows. It's the funnel plot. It's called a funnel plot. And a funnel plot is a way to visualize um, how studies can vary in uh, sampling error. Now, the meta-analyst actually uh, makes use of this and converts this variability into weights with the goal to give more weight to studies with larger sample sizes compared to studies with small sample sizes. And the idea is, um, I'm just going to blow up the number of effects included in the simulation here just so you could see the funnel shape is that studies with small sample sizes tend to be more variable in what they estimate. They may over or underestimate the underlying effect. 
whereas studies with large sample sizes tend to converge on the true underlying effect. And so we want to give those ones more weight in our synthesis because they provide um, better evidence of the underlying effect. And so the first thing that the meta-analysis does with the model is we have our dependent variable, which are effect sizes, and now we weight each one of these effect sizes based on their inverse variance. This is effectively called a fixed effect meta-analysis. You could also call it just a weighted regression. Um, and this is, uh, I suppose, the second way in which meta-analysis uh, model variability is we're really concerned about sampling error. And so now we weight the evidence based on how we perceive sampling error influencing the evidence. The fixed effect model, however, is a very risky way to do synthesis. Right, the goal with the weighted regression, the goal with the fixed effect model is to um, give more weight to studies with large sample sizes. However, when there are few studies included in your synthesis, the weights are really unbalanced, right? You might be overly weighing a study with a large sample size relative to whatever you include in your synthesis. These weights are relative. And, um, and so fixed effect models tend to be very sensitive to outliers. Uh, which is not ideal for synthesis, right? Basically, the fixed effect model, you're, um, you're losing the effective sample size of your synthesis level um, analyses uh, because now you're giving heavy weight to few study outcomes um, as opposed to a larger collection of study outcomes. So a way to counterbalance that and to cushion this weighting um, the meta-analyst does the final and third thing that makes meta-analysis uh, special is it attempts to um, cushion the individual weights used in the weighted regression um, by adding a little component of between study variability, which is uh, useful to um, describe and counterbalance the uh, overweighting that occurs in a fixed effect model. And so here finally we have our random effects meta-analysis where studies are quantified with effect sizes, they are not treated equally, and they are weighted relative to their sample predicted sampling error, and three, these weights are cushioned by the variability across studies. This is a more natural, more realistic way to model uh, study outcomes because we're thinking about sampling error within studies, but we're also thinking about the variability across studies and that um, when you're trying to reach a consensus, it's really important to try to model that type of uncertainty. And so that brings me to my final concluding remarks is meta-analysis is special because we spend a lot of time thinking about sources of variability across study outcomes. And, and that really is what makes meta-analysis an important tool to reach a consensus, to take an aggregate view of many studies, because we've thought and modeled things we know impact uh, the quality of information within and between studies. All right, I hope this was useful in uh, helping gel in your head what uh, the goals of meta-analysis are. I always need to be constantly reminded about these things. I had a conversation with a colleague earlier this week, and they were like, whoa, meta-analysis is so complicated. Uh, is there any shortcuts that I could do to kind of achieve a synthesis? And in a very much unsatisfying way, I wasn't quite able to um, describe to them why, why meta-analysis does what it does. Um, 
And I think maybe the simulation visualizations kind of can help with uh, make um, bring clarity to understanding the mechanics of the statistics that we use. Anyway, um, my son says I need to say this to uh, let the channel grow, so please subscribe and uh, like the video to goose the algorithm so <laughs> that I could uh, justify myself for making more of these videos. Ah, it's, um, it's difficult. I mean, uh, I spent a lot of time tinkering with the simulation, uh, and then I'm just talking silliness about meta-analysis at this point. Okay, so more videos are to come if you like this. Here's a bunch of links to other videos, and um, thanks for watching.